I'm working on a GMRS kit, and I think you should be working on one as well. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back, guys. Jason, KM4ACK. GMRS is not a topic you hear discussed very much on my channel at all. In fact, this might be one of the uh, maybe two or three videos that I've ever done on GMRS. But I wanted to kind of uh, get this video out there today because I think GMRS should be a critical portion of your overall communications. Let's face it, not everyone in the family is going to become a ham. Well, maybe you're in a very lucky family, but in this family, I'm the only ham. And I'm sure if you look around deep enough in your family, you'll find somebody that's not a ham radio operator either. And that's where GMRS really shines. Assuming that uh, you go ahead and pay the $35 fee to the FCC, you can get a GMRS license. The cool thing about GMRS, unlike ham radio, is that GMRS license covers pretty much everyone in your family. And they use a very broad definition of family uh, when they are talking about the family. It covers a lot more than you would ever expect it to. The FCC's website has complete details on exactly who all is covered. Now let's take a couple of minutes and talk about some of the kit that I've picked up to kind of put together my GMRS uh, plan or at least start to. This is kind of the very beginning for me, so I'm sure this is going to evolve going forward. I started off with a couple of these Alluance, Alliance, however you pronounce it. It's a Red of a Sister company, if I'm not mistaken. It's the H1HG, and I like this particular radio for several factors. A, it's not very expensive. I think you can get uh, one of these for 44 bucks, and definitely get two of them for less than 100 It does come with USB-C charging right there on the battery. This thing is IP67 rated, and the battery on it is a pretty good size at 2,800 milliamp hours. So quite a bit of capability in one of these, and if you get a pair of them, well, you've got a pretty decent set of radios. Now, one of the advantages of going with GMRS, unlike FRS, GMRS allows us to detach the antenna so we can put a better antenna on that radio. For the better antenna, I actually went with one of the Farajays. So the Farajay, in case you didn't know, it's a fabric antenna that has some Faraday cloth stitched into it. So this is basically a roll-up J-pole, but the cool thing about it is just how small the stinking thing folds down and how lightweight it is. Now, they all come with these BNC connectors, and I've got one of these Farajay antennas not only for my GMRS setup, but I also picked up one for my two meter setup. So I really have been digging these Farajay antennas. They do really well for an antenna, and they pack up to practically nothing, and they weigh almost nothing. Now, in addition to the two HTs, because let's face it, Simplex sometimes just won't cut it. Now, I'm pretty fortunate here in Middle Tennessee. We have had several, and I mean several, GMRS repeaters come online in the last 18 to 24 months. So we can actually cover a pretty good area in Middle Tennessee just with a few handhelds. However, there are times that me and the wife are out in the RV that I'm not close enough to one of those GMRS repeaters, but I want to extend the range of those handhelds. That's where you're gonna find something like this Redivus GMRS repeater is really going to come in handy. That's going to allow you to stretch the capabilities of those HTs into a much broader area than you would be able to work via simplex. Now you are going to need some sort of antenna to go along with that repeater. And I picked up one of these by N9TAX. I think these run like 35 bucks or so. And that has been a great addition to the repeater. Now, one other thing I do want to mention, if you pick up one of those repeaters, definitely make sure it comes with the hand mic because you can plug this hand mic straight into the side of that repeater and now that repeater 
also becomes a base station. Now, maybe you don't have need for a repeater. Maybe you've got plenty of GMRS repeaters in your area, kind of like we do, because honestly, when I'm in my hometown or even my home county, I don't have to worry about that repeater. A couple of handhelds and I'm good to go. Something you might want to consider instead of that repeater is a good mobile GMRS radio. One that you could possibly put in one of your vehicles or you could always set that on the desk and use that as a base radio as well. We can get quite a bit more power out of one of those mobile units compared to the HTs. But with a pretty basic little setup, including a couple of these HTs, you'll have a pretty good start on your GMRS capabilities. I happen to leave a couple of these radios in the truck all the time. These are the radios that me and the wife use when we roll into a RV park and we're starting to back the RV into its spot. She always jumps out, grabs one of those radios and helps me, kind of guides me, make sure I don't run the RV into anything as I'm backing that in. And we find those a lot more useful than cell phones because often we'll get into a state park that has very limited or no cell phone coverage. So the radios really shine in that case. I hope you found today's information helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.